Hello and welcome to Saving Grace Education. Today's lesson on spelling, punctuation and grammar will focus on standard English verb inflections. Today's lesson will include an introductory activity, an independent focused activity, a review activity and a consolidation activity. The aim of this lesson is to be able to use the standard English forms of verb inflections. The success criteria for this lesson include being able to explain what inflections are, to be able to explain the difference between standard English and non-standard English, to be able to use correct subject-verb agreement for was and were, and to use standard English for did and done. The introductory activity. Verbs are doing words, like run, walk, learn, or groan. Example, the boy groaned loudly. Verbs are also being words, like am, was, are, or were. Example, I am tired. An inflection is a change in the form of a word to show a grammatical function, such as a change in tense. Often, an inflection is the change in the ending of a word. Example, kicked is an inflection of the verb kick. Some words change completely when inflected. Example, went is an inflection of go. Sometimes, when you speak, you may use the locally spoken or non-standard ver forms of verb inflections. However, when you are writing down the verb inflections, you should always use Standard English. Standard English is often considered the correct form of English because it is grammatically correct and does not use any slang or dialect. Standard English is used in formal situations by public officials and traditionally by the media. Examples of locally spoken or non-standard forms of English include we was or I done. In standard English, these would be we were and I did. Can you think of any locally spoken forms of verb inflections that you use? Singular or plural. A verb can be singular or plural, but it must match the subject to which it relates. The rule is, to help with correct verb agreement, the basic rule is, if the subject is singular, the verb must also be singular. If the subject is plural, if it is more than one, the verb must also be plural. Identifying the subject. The subject of a verb is normally the noun noun phrase or pronoun that names the doer or beer. See if you can identify the subject in these sentences and see if you can identify the verb in these sentences. He drives 50 miles every day. Here the pronoun is he and the verb is drives. We have a singular subject and therefore a singular verb. In the second sentence they ride the school bus in the afternoon. The pronoun they is plural, so the verb ride is in the plural form. They ride. In the third sentence, the scissors cut the paper. Here we have a plural subject, scissors, so we have a plural verb, cut. The scissors cut the paper. Independent focused activity. In this activity, we will focus on was or were subject-verb agreement. Again, the rule. If the subject is singular, if it is one, the verb must be singular. If the subject is plural, if it is more than one, the verb must also be plural. To form the plural of a verb in present tense, you should remove the s from the singular form. Here are some examples on the right of verbs in the present tense, singular and plural form. Becomes, become. Catches in the singular, become catch in the plural. 
drinks is singular, while drink is plural. The singular flies become fly in the plural. Forgives is a singular, well, forgive is plural. Goes is singular, well, go is plural. Hides in the singular becomes hide in the plural. Leads in the singular becomes lead in the plural. The singular rides becomes the plural ride. Seeks in the singular becomes seek in the plural. The singular springs becomes spring in the plural. Tears is singular, while tear is plural. Right is singular, and right is plural. Now complete the activity on was or were subject verb agreement on the worksheet supplied. Here you identify whether was or were is the correct verb for the sentence. You will also write four of your own sentences like the examples above which use the verbs was and were correctly. Review activity. Tenses. Each verb must express a tense to indicate when an action takes place. Verb endings can change depending on the tense of the verb. I walk to school is the present tense. In the past tense, this will be yesterday I walked to school. Did you notice that for the past tense, the inflectional ending is ed? This is the same for most regular verbs. Some verbs follow rules and are regular. Regular verbs are verbs that form the past tense by adding the letter D or ED at the end. These then become inflections. Below are just a few examples of regular verbs with their inflections. Ask becomes asked. Chase becomes chased. Depend becomes depended. Employ becomes employed. Fade becomes faded. Gaze becomes gazed, hand becomes handed, join becomes joined, kick becomes kicked, learn becomes learned, back becomes backed, chew becomes chewed, decide becomes decided, excuse becomes excused, fold becomes folded, guess becomes guessed, hunt becomes hunted, joke becomes joked, and laugh becomes laughed. Some of the most common verbs are irregular verbs. Irregular verbs are unpredictable and take a variety of endings. Some change their spelling completely. Below are a few examples of irregular verbs with a simple past tense inflection. B, in the simple present tense, is am, is, or are. The verbs break, think, bring, buy, choose, creep, drive, get, grow, fly, keep, do, go, and know, are all in the simple present tense. In the simple past tense, these words become broke. Thought, brought, bought, chose, crept, drove, got, grew, flew, kept, did, went, and knew. An infinitive is a verb's basic form used as the headword in a dictionary. The infinitive form of a verb is the form which follows two. Here are a few examples. To ask, to believe, to cry. 
You can now complete verb tenses past and present on the displayed worksheet. We'll play this game with a partner. Cut out the sentences and shuffle them up. Put them face down on the table and take it in turns to turn over two sentences. If you turn over the same sentence in both the present and past tense, then keep them up. If not, turn them face down again and continue the game. The winner is the person with the most pairs of sentences at the end. In this activity, we'll underline the present tense verb in each sentence. Then, rewrite the sentences with each verb changed into the past tense and underline. The first one is completed for you. Consolidation activity. Locally spoken or standard English? Let's recap. An inflection is a change in the form of a word to show a grammatical function such as a change in tense. Often an inflection is the change in the ending of a word. Example. Kicked is an inflection of kick. While some words change completely when inflected. An example is went, which is an inflection of go. Standard English. Sometimes, when you speak, you may use locally spoken or non-standard forms of verb inflections. However, when you are writing down the verbs, you should always use standard English. I done is an example of locally spoken or non-standard English, while I did is an example of standard English. Do, does, did or done. The infinitive form of this verb is to do. I, you, we, they, do. He or she or it does in the present tense. In the past tense, the word do becomes did. And the past participle form of this verb is done. Which sentences use standard English? I done my exercises. I did my exercises. I have done my exercises. It is clear that between 1, 2 and 3, sentences 2, I did my exercises, and 3, I have done my exercises, are in standard English. Let's have a look at sentences 4, 5 and 6. He done his homework. They did their homework. I do my homework today. Here, sentences 5 and 6 are in the standard English form. They did their homework. And I do my homework today. The past participle form of a verb is a form of the verb but not a tense. It cannot be used alone as a verb. Now we are going to make a list of verbs which have different past tenses or past participles in standard and the local dialects. Which different situations would we use the different verb inflections? Remember that the past participle of a verb is a form of the verb but not a tense. It cannot be used alone as a verb. Standard English verb inflections. Now you will use all the information you have learned and practiced about standard English verb inflections. Work on your own to complete the application activity on the provided worksheets. The aim of today's lesson was to be able to use standard English forms of verb inflections. Today's success criteria included being able to explain what inflections are, being able to explain the difference between standard English and non-standard English, to be able to use correct subject verb agreement for was and were, and to use standard English for did and done. If you did not achieve today's aim or meet today's success criteria, please have a look at the lesson again until you are able to do so. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson.